Welcome to Wilton Mill in Northamptonshire for round eight of the Stevenage Sheet Metal Super One British Karting Championships. It's the Rotax, TKM and ultra competitive Honda Cadet classes coming up in the programme today. This is the premier karting championship in the UK, although not necessarily the one with the best looking presenter. That'll be the other one. Now, at Shannington Kart Club recently, we saw the inaugural running of the new English Championships, and all of the winners that day can now run the E-plate on their cart. And one young man joining me actually won that day, but I notice, Owen Byatt, you're not running the E-plate on your cart today. So first of all, tell us why not. Um, well, I would like to, but uh, the thing is, my mechanic says that it doesn't really look the part, to be honest. Uh, I mean, it, the E's a bit too big. Okay, all right. Now, I just want you to talk through the last lap, though, from the hairpin um, at Shennington. It was absolute drama all the way. We're going to show it on screen now, but just talk us through the last lap coming out of Stratford hairpin. For the last time, two into one, doesn't go! Oh, they're off! Oh, and Bias bounced off the tyres and he's carried on! Unbelievable! Well, um, I, can't, I got round the outside of him going towards Stratford and then... Uh, he drove into into the back of me and straight over the top of me. Uh, so then we were in like a dead heat drag race going towards the uh, chicane. And I managed to hold it around the outside and I thought I'd managed to keep it. But then he drove into the side of me and uh, clobbered the curb and just like went straight into me. And uh, we both went straight into the tyre wall. So. Well, particularly lucky for you, though, because as we can see, you bounced off the tyres back onto the track and managed to keep going and ended up winning the race. How lucky was that? Yeah, I know. I was extremely lucky. I was uh, really happy with this as well. Like, um, I just kept it pinned while I was in the wall and just hoped for the best. OK, I guess we'll just have to get you a smaller E for your cart then. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Now, the other driver in that incident happened to be Tommy Foster. And as a pure coincidence, we spoke to Tommy's mother, Jane, earlier about her involvement at a typical race weekend and Tommy's endorsement by Prince Albert of Monaco. You get quite involved not only in making the tea and the coffee and making sure he's eating properly, but you actually get involved in changing the tyres, don't you, and the mechanic inside of it. Yeah, yeah, I do do quite a bit of the mechanic. I enjoy doing it. Um, since we've gone up to the Minimax, is a lot more involved. So Rob intends to do the engines and the chassis, and I, I do the tyres. And just tell us about this uh, endorsement you've got from Prince Albert of Monaco. That's a very prestigious endorsement there. How did that come about? Uh, we've known the Prince for over 20 years through his uh, involvement in bobsleigh um, driving. He did five Olympics uh, as a bobsleigh uh, driver. He's very involved in sport, loves motorsport, obviously, from the Monaco Grand Prix. Years and years of, uh, of knowing various drivers uh, in Monaco and so on. And uh, he got involved when Tommy first started to race. He saw a, a kart race in Monaco, which made Tommy want to come back to the UK and race. That's how we started it, and Albert St. Senna has followed everything that Tommy's done in racing. Well, he's going to have a very interesting fight here, Tommy Foster, from the back of the grid. His rival in the last Super Prix, Owen Byatt, it starts from P9, but it's Jewison and Turney from the front row, Chesterton and Kimber. Then it is from row three, Finn Keneally and Garrett Webb, with Tom Wood and William Pettit sharing row four in front of Byatt and Chris Lullum in 10th position. And look at the weather we have got here at the Wilton Mill circuit. Away we go. Jewis gets a good run there from Joe Turney as we go into Oblivion and Crook. Look at the spray. Massive effect on all of the drivers this has, particularly when you're running in the midfield, the spray. Well, you've got no windscreen wipers, of course, on the helmet, so you can't see very much. Oh. As Wes Brown turns it round, going into Christmas corner. One driver takes avoiding oh. action. That's Butterfield and uh, Garrett Webb involved. So uh, Butterfield and Webb get it together. 
Dear, oh dear, that's the highest place rookie on the grid. Garrett Webb gone there, turned around in a little bit of an incident there with Jensen Butterfield. Let's have a look at what happened to Wesley Brown at Christmas. I don't think, uh, does he get tagged? I'm not sure he does, just loses it there, spins it round. And then further round the corner, we've got uh, Jensen Butterfield and Garrett Webb tangling as well. I think they're both running a, running a game, but well down the field. Yeah, it's not really surprising in these conditions. We're at the boot, and already we've got a little bit of a tussle for various different positions in the field now in the early stages. That's Owen Bayer at the E-plate, not running the E-plate, obviously, as we saw him interviewed earlier. It looks like he's potentially around about fifth or sixth place. That's Tyler Chesterton for Coles Racing on the 25 machine. And he's up to third position. Chesterton doing a great job at the moment, trying to close down on Jewis and Turney. For Dan Holland racing, it's Mark Kimber just in front of the 38 of Byatt and then comes the 30 of Finn Keneally. So Byatt started P9, he's already up to fifth. Is he going to go fourth down the inside of Kimber? Yes, he is. So the E plate, the English champion, up to fourth place and going with him is Finn Keneally. Wow, that's really brave on the exit of Ashby. You really have to commit to that move and know you're going to make it stick. And Owen Byatt doing a cracking job on the inside line there. There would have been so much standing water on that inside line. So much spray being chucked up here as back on the inside comes Kimber to try and take on Keneally. And here too with them comes Jordan Collard. That, of course, is the son of British touring car race Rob as up the inside to move up into sixth position. Very sweet move there off the turn. William Pe at it with the green helmet looks like he gave Collard a little bit of a tap but no real damage done you see the rooster tails coming up off the rear of the car as Keneally seems to run wide there going onto the concrete doesn't look like he's lost a place though up to Christmas corner that's William Pettit in behind then Kimber is a 47 McCarthy just behind, then Lullum and Collard having a great scrap. Chris Lullum, the RL Racing driver, number 20, doing a great job. We saw Finn Keneally just understeering straight on at uh, Crook Corner, the second turn, the right-hander. That's one of the biggest problems you have in these conditions. So much standing water on the racing line. You've got no grip at all, and Finn Keneally doing a cracking job to hold it together with William Pettit giving him some massive, massive pressure at the moment, trying to work his way through. He's defending already. This is one of the problems you have in the rain you can't really use the racing line because of all the rubber that's been laid down on that racing line that actually makes you slide more in wet conditions you have to come up with an alternative racing line and well that is an alternative racing line yeah and i want to say this as well as the oplate gets a warning as you just saw that across the finish line you see the new digital signing system there so William Pettit was getting a warning, possibly for that contact with Collard earlier in the race. Well, here comes Lullum up the inside of McCarthy, and he makes the move stick very nicely into Christmas. Oh, a little bit too close for McCarthy as he goes into the back of Lullum, and Jordan Collard is going to try and come round the outside to move up a position. Lullum gets away with that. Thank goodness he wasn't punted off. Now McCarthy's going to go very late into Ashby. That was a very risky move. Collard tries to take advantage, but can't quite get it done. Uh, I wanted to mention earlier on, Jake, that the concrete on the outside of the final turn is not the racetrack. I know you like to talk about track limits. The concrete on the outside of the final turn, we'll have a look at it in a minute and see how many drivers are taking advantage of that ultra-wide line. That is a quicker line through the corner, particularly in the dry conditions. You could argue perhaps not so much if we get contact again. And that's McCarthy being run wide. Look at that. The amount of carts, they're all four wheels on the concrete. That is not the racetrack. No, indeed. You can tell where the racetrack is. It's the black stuff with the white lines on either side. Yeah. Where the other drivers in wet conditions clearly haven't spotted that as McCarthy is still getting involved with the two boys from RL Racing. Jordan Collard has slipped through. Here comes Axel Charpentier with Bradley Barrett, the Coles Racing driver, tucked in behind as well in the 16. So there's a great scrap in the midfield here as Collard again feels the need to defend. Charpentier slings it up the inside of Ashby and this is going to be a great opportunity for Barrett to get one over on him as well but he hasn't quite been able to close up on him yet. Great action all the way down the field now in, in conditions like this we often get uh, the leaders well clear and that's what we've got here Ken Jewis well out front he's not getting much uh, screen time he's leading by too far so it's the midfield runners here that are getting all the screen time but uh, that's where the action is and that's Kimber on the 47 is he going to lose another place to Lullum doesn't look like it 
That's Jordan Collard on the nine again. They're all taking that <laughs> wide line over the concrete. Oh I'm dear. not sure what the clerks will have said earlier in the day. They may be thinking, you know what, it's difficult conditions. It's in the wet. If this was in the dry, I'm pretty sure they would be getting warning flags. Well, Lullum has managed to pop up the inside of Mark Kimber. I tell you what, if it was Formula One, they'd all be in the steward's office for completely disregarding the racetrack. Thank goodness it isn't on this occasion. Lullum in front of Kimber now, as we know. And Jordan Collard is having a look on the inside of Ashby. Kimber defends valiantly there. Axel Charpentier gives him a little bit of a love tap as Jordan Collard comes through. We're back towards the front end. Joe Turney there in second position in front of a valiant Tyler Chesterton. This is a great drive from Chesterton in third position. So uh, Turney second, Chesterton third. But where's the lead? We've not really seen the race leader, have we, the entire race? And I can tell you, Jake, if things stay like this, there is Kian Jewis. Kian Jewis will be the champion in 2015 with one round remaining. That's the 96 of Turney. He's having a cracking day in the conditions. It's really difficult through turn one and two there, isn't it? Lots of standing water. Up Manuel's bank now into Christmas Corner. This will be an overtaking opportunity. Chesterton look at, looks like, I mean, he's in the box seat. He's got the spray in his face, but he looks down the inside. A great move, I was saying. He's going to line him up, but uh, didn't take long to line him up. Took a beautiful move. Up the inside into the right-hander at Inkermans and Chesterton through to second place. That is one of the most balls-out, gunning-for-glory moves I've seen in the championship this year in ridiculously wet conditions and a very tricky corner to make an overtake as Jordan Collard gets the warning flag. Tyler Chesterton lines up a spectacular move on Joe Turney and I don't think the 96 even expected him to be there. No, he came from uh, two or three cart lengths back, didn't he? And uh, made a fantastic move. They're all running wide again through the final turn. That would pretty much be all she wrote as we join it on the last lap. It's Kian Dewis who is going to be the 2015 champion with a fantastic drive today. Chesterton's put in the fastest lap of 59.49. Dewis cares not a jot about that. We've got warning flags on the last lap for carts 7 and 9. But here comes the 87 of Kian Dewis. Well clear. He is going to be the champion in 2015 in Minimax. Tommy Foster's brought it home from the back of the grid to be the leading rookie, but it's Kian Dewis that takes the win and is the champion in 2015 in the class. What a satisfying moment that will be for Kian Dewis. All the hard work in 2015, and now finally Super One Minimax champion 2015, winning a Minimax title in the British National Championship. That is huge for a racing driver's career, and that will set him on the road to Super for stardom. Tyler Chesterton, a great run to second place in front of Joe Turney. Owen Byatt in fourth, great drive from him from William Pettit. Chris Lullum in sixth place ahead of Finn Keneally, Alex McDade, Barrett and McCarthy. And speaking of McCarthy, it's Chris McCarthy who caught up with the new Minimax champion. Kian, you won the race, you may have even wrapped up the championship. How do you feel? Yeah, I feel amazing, especially winning with one run to go. It's been a really good year this year. And, you know, just talk us through the year itself, you know, you pretty much dominated the year and you've only just come up from cadets. Yeah, I've won quite a few races this year and GYG wasn't the best around, so we lost quite a few points, but we was obviously gaining them back here, which has been a great result. And yeah, what does that come down to? Is that just a lot of hard work off the circuit as well as on the circuit? Yeah, a lot of effort has been put in to obviously our fitness, for the hold on through the whole race and obviously off track, on track, sorry. And as I say, a massive thank you to Strawberry Racing. So the first Super One champion of the 2015 season is crowned. It's Kian Dewis in fantastic style. More rain and the Honda Cadets after the break.